सहना वबतु सहना भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्वीनावधि तमस्तु माँ विद्विषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरिओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु um today i want to start the class with doing trambaka mantra because um one of my bhavi ji is from uh, delhi she passed away 2 3 days ago and uh, we just want to do the for the shanti of her atma and in her honor i want to do five times um, trambaka mantra om trambaka ओम त्रयंबक यजामहे सुकंध्यम पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमी बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं त्रयंबक यजामहे सुकंध्यम पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमी बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओम त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधिम पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमी बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधिम पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमी बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधिम पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमी बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं शांति 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 ओके सो वी आर एट वर्स नाइन ऑफ चैप्टर सिक्स ऑफ भगवदगीता we finished eight and there krishna bhagwan was uh, describing the goal the yogi who is satisfied with the knowledge and wisdom who remains unshaken who has conquered the senses to whom a lump of earth a stone and a gold are the same is said to be harmonized that is he is said to have attained nirvikal samadhi so that's the final stage and from there looking from there he sees oneness and that same samatvam he continues in the next verse this time the samatvam is pertaining to people around him because he talked about the you know mental state and he talked about the first the body that how you know heat and cold and all the thing different afflictions that happened in the body how he stayed samatvam then it was the mind you know joy and sorrow may come to us everybody whether you are saint or a sinner it comes in everybody's life joy and sorrow how he keeps samatvam and then uh, he talked about honor and dishonor in the previous verses i'm talking about and that you know how you, your intellect you should stay samatvam then he talked about the materials in the world you know not giving it extra unnecessary uh, attention to it but keep it you know as your utility value may be there but just up to that and don't project more value than necessary now he's talking about in this verse different people so let's see you know what uh, different saints and sages have to say about it so um like i said that this the famous uh, verse is there in chapter 2 samatvam yoga uchyate means you know yoga is samatvam of, of mind so that's the theme so from that st- state of realization when when uh, this this uh, yogi who has attained that nirvikal samadhi he he after that when he sees he sees se- same self everywhere and he never forgets that so basically he understands that the whole world is a expression of the same self and this can be we have done these examples but they are very relevant here sometimes we understand it better with examples the best example is of the gold and the gold ornaments you know once you recognize the gold in the gold ornament you know that value and no matter which the ornament is you see the gold 
or the goldsmith always sees the gold. And the same thing you can talk about is, is, is you know, the waves. Uh, it could be different shapes of the waves, some higher, some lower, some small, some big, you know, and they, they last different um, times. But, uh, the, you know, if you see the water in them, then you have the same vision and you understand that that's what it is. So those two examples can explain what they are saying over here. So if you take that same example to this cosmos, so all appear different, but they are different only with the respect of body, mind, and intellect. But in the essence, they are the same. So you can call it essential and non-essential. So non-essentials are the ones changing things that, that appear different. And that's not the real nature. So he, this person who is at that stage, he has absolutely no doubt about it. You know, and so that's why, and he never forgets it. We might remember this and understand this in our Gita class, but a moment, sometime we get out in the world, we forget about it. That's the difference. So um, then he, here, you know, um, they have talked about different people. So let me first do the verse, and then that will help us to see what the words are there in there. So in verse 9, I'm chanting. Sruhud mitre udasina madhyastha dvesya bandhushu sadhu shvapicha papeshu samabuddhir vishishyate. So now there are so many, this is, looks like such a big word over here, right? Whoever has a book, but actually there are different, different things. So one is sruhud and uh, we will, all these Sanskrit words have very deep meaning. So we will see what it means. You know, good hearted, but there is a lot more behind it because just giving the word meaning, it doesn't explain everything, but we'll see. And then Mitra, everybody knows, friends. And then it says Ari. Ari is actually enemies. So you can have a friend or an enemy in this world. And then there is uh, Udasina. Indifferent means people who you know, they don't, they are not interested in you, what you're doing. You know, I think most, most of the people around in the world are like that, right? I mean, only your relatives and friends are interested. They're going to be interested. So there are many of those indifferent people. And then neutrals. Neutrals uh, are the ones who are like, you know, they. if you have a, some kind of a difference with somebody, this neutral person is not going to take sides that way. I like you more and I don't like you. They are like, they, they will have a, they are like mediators. You know, the best example is, suppose you have a very close friend and, and you are, you are uh, friends with husband and wife both, and now they got a divorce, but you're not going to favor one person because you like them both. <laughs> Something like that, okay? So that's what it is. You know, new, neutral. Haters, everybody, you know, you know, people that we absolutely can't stand, you know, or they irritate you maybe, milder form of it. And relatives. So, you know, relatives are, uh, everybody has relatives. When you're born in this world, you're always born with relatives. And then there is sadhu. The word is there. Sadhu is righteous. Api also. Cha is and. Papeshu means sadhu bhi or papi bhi log hai. People who do bad stuff and all that. Samabuddhi. That's the samatma. One who has equal mind for all of them. Vishishite, that person accepts. So now let's see what they are saying over here. Uh, so first we take Suruhud, right? So there are different kinds of relationship we develop in this world when we come because of the body, mind and intellect. Atma, everybody is same, but because people have differences in body, mind and intellect, the nature of people are different. So relationship also keeps changing. Because we know body, mind and intellect changing and you know, we know very well in this world today that somebody is your friend, tomorrow becomes your enemy. You know, that also happens. We have seen those also, even among countries that happens. And then, uh, um, so, so, you know, Dili Wale Swami said that just like the environment keeps changing, the weather keeps changing like that, all the relationships, on <laughs> how you feel about somebody also keep changing. So it, it really kind of, there's no stability from that perspective in the world, you know. And so, you know, two people might come together and then go apart 
or uh, there are people are apart, they come together, you know, anything can happen. And he gave a kind of example. He said that you go to Gangaji, you know, a lot of us have been there. Usme diya bahate hain log, right? So he's saying that, well, chalo, saath mein diya bahate hain, you know, two people. So then they, they put the diya and the diya goes in totally opposite direction. <laughs> Sometimes two opposite people are two different corners, their diyas come together, you know. And he's saying, kisi ne diya dala, wo wahi doob jata hai. Dusra khub der tak jalta hai. So he was just keep saying, ki, you know, like that relationships are also kind of like that. And so um, Swamiji said that, you know, in Bhaja Govindam, a lot of you might know Shankaracharya's Bhaja Govindam. It seems that over there he says that, you know, the, a true seeker should not put unnecessarily effort in, you know, friends and enemy and all. He should just remember that everybody has the same substratum. Okay. So, but the other very important thing over here is, and we have talked about it, that there is something called uh, Vyahavar in the world also. So there are differences and different relationships. So we have to follow that also. It's not like, oh, I see sameness in everybody. So I'm going to treat everybody same. Then it becomes kind of very strange behavior in the world. <laughs> so, so, but what they're trying to say is from what perspective he sees and he doesn't forget. And if you see somebody same as that higher perspective, you will do the right behavior with them actually. Unnecessarily. Whatever is vihavar mein zaruri hai, you might do it, you know. So um, he was saying that um, that um, Ram Chandra Ji ka example le lo, okay. There were two brothers, Vibhishan and, and Raman. So from the worldly perspective, he saw the same Atma in both of them, like himself, okay. He saw himself in everyone. Um, but he behaved, you know, like an enemy with Ravan because of the worldly transaction that he was having. You know, he kidnapped his wife and all that. And so he, uh, he fought with him. So, so from that perspective, he treated him like an enemy. And then his own brother, Vibhishan, he was a good person and he became Ramchandraji's friend. So this is just a worldly example. Okay? But to have that uh, same buddhi and, uh, you know, vision of wisdom... And um, in all different types of being, and here when they talk about being, they're not just talking about human beings. They're talking about all the jivas. That, you know, how he sees oneness in the, all the jivas. So that's what you have to remember. The behavior is, worldly uh, behavior could be different, but that samabuddhi is from the higher perspective. He sees samabuddhi in all of them. So now let's see what suruhud mean. So, See, these are the people who are like, they do, they will do things for you without expecting anything from you. It's just extremely good hearted people. And um, this word comes in Bhagavad Gita a lot. And Bhagwan ko suruhud kaha gaya. Who does for you without expecting anything from you. Uh, it, it's like a, a parent doing for a child, you know, if it's a true relationship, true love. So so that's what it is, without expecting anything in return. So that's Ruth. One step above, even friends. Mitra means, you know, they are very affectionate towards her. They, in, in their, a true friend is like, you know, you can see Arjuna, uh, Arjuna and, and Lord Krishna guide you on the right path when necessary, prevent you, you know, from doing, taking wrong uh, direction in life always there for you, you know, uh, and accepting you, whatever you are, good, bad, whatever, that's, that could be a, a true friend. So those that can come under. Enemies are, you know, they're trying to hurt and harm us, you know, and for whatever reason, that transactions in the world. So, and he's saying that once somebody becomes an enemy, they are a lot on your mind, you know. So these are just different relationships. Udasin is, a, we already talked about it, indifferent, you know, they, they don't care if you're happy, unhappy. They're not interested in whatever you're doing, you know. So that's what the large group of people are like that in the world. You can say besides your, all the other people they're talking about, everybody would be like that, you know. But there are some kind-hearted people who will, if they see you very unhappy, some strangers sometimes come and start talking to you, you know. So 
those exceptions are always there. You know, Suruhud kind of people are there, definitely. So keep that in mind. And Madhyas, the neutrals, we talked about it. That they, even with your enemy and all, they, they want welfare of both of you. And they, these are the big people who sometimes try to mediate. You know, samjhayenge dono ko ke bhai. You know, don't be enemies and all that because they actually care about both. So those, and Dvesha is um, they are the people that tumare man mein unke liye thoda sa Dvesh paida ho jata hai. Thoda and what um, Nikhila Nanji was saying is, you know, they kind of irritate you. Some people, <laughs> and and he's saying that even if you are walking in a spiritual path, it can happen. So don't think that it doesn't, because until you reach that absolutely high state. There are going to be people who will who will irritate you. So so you know what he was talking about is that just like the likes and dislikes we did in chapter three. If you remember, whoever was here when we did chapter three, or some food taste, you know, we like something, we don't like something, or likes and I like this way, I don't like this way. So what are these likes and dislikes? You are born with it because of your vasanas. So he's saying that it's not like we we should try to. Get rid of them because until you reach that nirvikal samadhi, it's, you are not going to be able to get rid of it. So how do you handle it? That's the whole thing that Krishna Bhagwan gave a trip. Uh, I mean, trick in chapter three that we'll repeat over here. So he said that don't come under the sway of likes and dislikes. That's the most powerful thing he said because you won't be able to get rid of it, but don't let it come uh, on in the way of your sadhana that you are doing. So don't get carried away by them. That's what what likes and dislikes. Because he's saying that the moment you try to eliminate them, when you are still not reached that highest level, one like you will eliminate, another like will come. Same thing will happen with dislike also. You know, so it, that's what the truth is that you won't be able to get rid of them. Don't come under its come under its sway. And then. Um, Next one over here is bandhu. Bandhu means relative. So, so he's saying that relatives are you are stuck with them for the rest of your life. You cannot choose <laughs> friends. You can choose relatives. You have absolutely no choice. Some bandhi, you know, your all. So we already know brother, sister, parents, you know, whoever. And see the word how it's come. Bandhu, relative. The word has come from bandhan. They bind you, whether you like it or not. You know, so that's what it's bandhu is, and then we sadhu. Everybody knows, you know, you know, who follow the goodness of path of goodness, righteousness. Papi is uh, papeshu is you know exactly opposite, doing bad stuff and all that. So, how is the vision? All these kitne sare logon ki nadi hai Bhagwan ne, Lord Krishna ne. Koi chhoda nahi isme se, right? If you look at our all our relationship, everything he covered in detail. He said, towards all this realized master, you know, he develops a vision of sameness because he sees the same element, same tattva in all of them. And you know, worldly he might interact with them differently, but he never forgets that. That's what it is, and he realizes that the interaction I'm doing with them in the world is towards his mind and body, not the atma. That's what it is. And then he's saying that you know, but you have to remember. Don't take it in a wrong way. This thing because then you will act very strangely, okay. And that we gave the example of that hathi coming to you. Oh, I'm seeing Brahman everywhere. It doesn't want to move. No, don't do that kind of stuff. So he's saying that wo tiger ko dekhega aur cow ko dekhega. So he's not going to approach the tiger. Huh? He knows <laughs> that's not a wise thing to do. Cow he will approach. So even the realized master kind of he has to you know use that kind of sense. Um, so but. Seeing, you know, an enemy and friend, both, that's the main thing. And I think that sometimes we see the example. And I remember in um, Ramayan, it seems that I'm sure that a lot of you know these stories, but it's very relevant relevant over here. So, um, Ravan ne apne do doot bheje the. Doot ne the, sorry. Spies. Spy bheje the, ki ve ja ke check kar ke aao. कि क्या क्या कर रहे तो ये राक्षस लोग अपना they can change their form right so they I think they became some birds or something and they were sitting and they were trying to see कि क्या हो रहा है इनके शिविर में 
यू नो आई थिंक अभी उन्होंने पार नहीं किया था समुद्र यू नो सो दे वर ट्राई टू फिगर आउट बट सम ऑफ द पीपल इन इन रामचंद्र जी आर्मी ओ वेरी स्मार्ट सो दे दे न्यू दैट ये राक्षस है तो उनको पकड़ लिया और वो अपने फॉर्म में आ गए रामचंद्र जी के पास लेके गए बोले कि यू नो इनको कड़ी से कड़ी सजा दो ये आके हमारे शिविर में और हमारा सारा भेद खोल रहे हैं यू नो सो रामचंद्र जी ने उनको बड़े प्रेम से बोला अच्छा भेद खोलने आए हैं कोई बात नहीं जाके देख लो जो जो देखना है यहाँ पे कोई बात नहीं तुम अपना काम करके जाओ यू नो मीन्स ही वॉज दैट्स हाउ ही वुड ट्रीट द एनिमी थिंग एंड इट सीम्स दट वेन दीज टू गाइज वेंट बैक टू रावण तो वो मतलब इतना रामचंद्र जी के प्रति उसके मन उनके मन में प्रेम जागृत हो गया कि वो मतलब रामचंद्र जी की प्रशंसा करने लगे वो रावण के सामने है रावण लाइक वट इज वट इज हैपनिंग सो दैट्स वॉट दिस दे सम बुद्धि इट इज एंड देन वी ऑल्सो नो एवरीबडी नोज दैट स्टोरी दैट वेन रामचंद्र जी वॉन्टेड टू डू अ पूजा ऑफ शिव जी and he told his uh, people go get get the best pandit and they said what yahan kahan milega best pandit to ravan hi hai you know to usko wahan se bula ke and then he did not treat him like an enemy he treated him like a, a pandit and he gave him guru dakshina whatever you know the whole story is there in one of the south indian ramayans i think it's there that's what they are talking about that some buddhi you know but later on he fought with him so he doesn't keep that animosity as an animosity doesn't hold it in his in his uh, mind like we do with people you know that's what the whole idea over here is in fact uma ji isme isi mein wo jab unhone ravan ko bulaya na matlab as a priest to wo bola ki jo jo mujhe ab kaam karna hai priest ka mujhe karna padega wo sita mata ko bhi wahan pe leke aaye aur unko bola tha ki aapne ये कंपन ऋषि में रामायण में लिखा है राइट भाई आप आप मेरे अंडर हैं यहाँ पे अगर क्योंकि अब आपके पति ने पूजा करनी है तो आपको मैं ले जाऊंगा फिर वापस लेके आऊंगा करेक्ट I heard about that. That that was the most amazing thing, you know. And he Ramchandra ji honored it, and Sita honored it too. Okay, I'll come. I'll I'll sit with him to do the puja and I'll go back. I mean, I don't know, Baba. Ravan se Ravan ne Bhagwan Ram ne usko usko diksha deni chahi jab kuch bhi. तो उसने बोला कि जब मैं मरूं तो मेरे सामने खड़े रहना बस wow. यही उन्होंने रावण ने उनसे मांगा बिकॉज इन साइड ही न्यू इट दैट यू नो दैट ही वॉन्टेड द मुक्ति Yeah. yeah, the whole story is behind that. That he was Jay Vijay from you know of his door, doorman and all. So yeah, life, yeah, lot of lot of things are there. So those are the things that in this history of ours, Ramayana and Mahabharat, lot of different incidents open up. You know what we learn in the Upanishads. There, what are they? What do they mean by samabuddhi and all that? Those are the things that come up. True. Yeah, that's very good points. Um. So and then you know just to um, give a example of hey that. you know in vyavahar sometimes we might have to do you know different behavior but that doesn't mean inside he's still looking at them as same and so he gave a you know nikhilanand ji gave a very good uh, example he said that suppose you have one pant and shirt made from the same material you know like kurta pajama hota hai na men ka so he's saying that when you have made, material is same but you're not going to wear pajama up and uh, shirt down <laughs> you know you are going to wear it at the right place because that's the right thing to do so the same same way the relationship vyavahar mein jo hoga na you have to use your discrimination you know how to behave in the world with with the different people you know you have a grandfather and a baby you're going to treat them differently that's what it means so um but the main point over here is that this person who is like established in that knowledge his understanding remains same in all circumstances see what us happens to us is that we we forget and we get carried away with our emotions he he does not okay and that is the test of the wisdom when he does not it's he's established in that and that's why it's called characteristic of the man of steady wisdom is bataya gaya wo tit pragna ko english mein translation karne ka wohi hai steady wisdom so if if it start changing your wisdom it's different from and then it's no good couldn't you know and um he said that what do people ordinary people what they do in the world is that oh so yeah i believe in god so anything good is happening to their life they will say oh bhagwan ka prasad hai you know and all that good is happening and you know the, like when when uh, something kind of not so good happen in their life 
कई लोग तो भगवान को छोड़ ही देंगे ओ आई डोंट बिलीव इन गॉड एनी मोर बिकॉज बैड थिंग एपन टू मी ऐसा नहीं है उनका ज्ञान सो दे वो स्टार्ट कर्सिंग गॉड एंड कर्सिंग एवरीबडी अल्स एंड ब्लेमिंग एवरीबडी अल्स यू नो सो दैट्स द डिफरेंस ही वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैन वी कैन सी दैट um so he think that they actually do that kind of behavior you know drop the god or cursing and all that because their their wisdom is not stead, steady and their understanding is not clear they don't have clarity of of knowledge like we say that's what happens so that's why it's important to have the clarity of knowledge um and and what, the other thing that happens to those kind of people is their understanding is based on their own likes and dislikes which krishna bhagwan said you should not come under this way so basically these uh, verse 7 8 and 9 it's telling you the nature of a yukta purusha yukta we talked about that one is a yogi who is striving and one when he becomes that uh, oneness with the brahman or in nirvikal sapani he becomes a yukta purusha um and he's saying that who is this yukta purusha he's followed the path of meditation and he's realized the self so bhagwan says that such a person there is a word here last word in in this verse is vishishyate means he excels a person who is striving and who develops the sama buddhi he is the person who is going to excel in this he is the best among the yoga rood because yoga rood is one who has control the mind but abhi usko mila nahi hai final experience so kisko milega जो ये समबुद्धि में जीने लगेगा वो स्टार्ट लुकिंग यू नो एट दिस एवरीबडी एट दिस विद द सेम मैच दैट्स व्हाट इट मींस सो निखिलानंद जी वाज सेइंग दैट हाउ अर्जुन वाज लाइक लेटर ऑन इट विल कम इन दिस वर्स आई मीन नॉट वर्स इन दिस चैप्टर अर्जुन विल आस्क कि भाई ये समता का जो योग है ना वो बड़ा मुश्किल है एंड वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट इट दैट ही इज गोइंग टू वेरी डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज़ माय माइंड इज टू रेस्टलेस एंड यू नो हाउ वी आल्सो सी दैट it's easier said than done we can talk about having sameness and all that but jo ramchand ki kahani naresh ji was saying how many of us will be able to do it <laughs> so is that this is very difficult but um you know what we have to do is if you follow systematically what krishna bhagwan is saying you have a better chance of reaching there so um what happens after this verse is going to be that hey um uh, what is going to happen uh, in uh, verse 10 is he now he's going to tell that that how after telling the goal this is all the goal we are he's telling the goal what should be our final goal how to get there then again he's going to systematically explain starting from you know very basic so that's what we are going to do after this so just to summarize that one who wants to follow the dhyana yoga the first step was karma yoga and uh, the second step was once you karma yoga se jab tum apna mind purify kar lete ho and then you get the the yoga rude ho jate ho means control of the mind ho jata hai of your senses then the next step was shama shama was quietude of mind he has to practice the quietude of mind and that was the sadhana and then how we should follow that path to become absolutely peaceful and quiet that he's going to tell you in the next verse so that's what this whole thing is about any comment question or somebody wants to add anything to this verse yeah oh ma ji i just wanted to uh, just to get a clarification does this uh, um the shloka also says that um the yoga roda has uh, doesn't see duality yeah exactly so that is, yeah. Yeah? yeah yeah that is what it is saying yeah but remember like how the nikhilanand ji was saying when we are in this body mind and intellect we have to deal with the duality right okay. uh, but uh, he does not forget so he doesn't give okay. unnecessarily um reality to it he okay. he will just deal at a superficial level it's something like this ramayana story uh-huh. you know at at a very high level uh, ravan and Ra- ramchandra ji both knew they are pay- playing a role okay <laughs> you okay. know it, because one of the serials that came on on uh, 
you know, TV. I don't know whether there were two, two three Ramayans have come, right? In mm-hmm. one of them, um, it's like when, whenever uh, Ravan used to address Ramchandra Ji, na, he will never say Shri Ram. He will uh-huh. always say, Are wo banwasi, are wo ye. He will kind of insult him. Because he was, it seems that he was very afraid that if I say Shri Ram, I will say that my heart will be a prem and I will not be able to do this role. Because he had the shrap that if he had to go to the human being, to the human being, to the human being, to the human being, if he will become a enemy, he will finish in three. And if he will become a mitra, he will have to take the human being to the human being. Achha, achha. So that was the whole original thing, if you go all the way back. So he decided to become the enemy. <laughs> it sounds very bizarre, but he said that I can't stay so much time far away from you, so I will become an enemy. Ban jata <laughs> So, so that's what it is. So when you're talking about duality, it's like they know the, that at the superficial level, duality exists, but at, at the higher level, it's one. So what you're saying, true. Okay. Any other point? Okay, everybody okay? All right. So let's read. Premji, you okay. want to read? Very good. Yeah. We who each of the same mind to the good-hearted, friends, relatives, enemies, the indifferent, the neutral, the hateful, the righteous, and the unrighteous excels. Should I continue? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. In the previous stanza, it was indicated that the man of perfection develops equal division as far as the things of the world are concerned. The universe is not made of things alone, but is constituted of being also. Now the doubt arises is of what will be the relationship between a perfect man of equipoise with the living kingdom of beings around him. Will he negate the whole lot of unreal? Is this preoccupations with the experience of the eternal and the immortal, which is the substratum of the entire world of changing phenomenal beings? Will he ignore to serve the world and help the living generations. This idea is taken up here for discussion in this stage. So here, like you, I had explained to you before that first they were talking about, you know, different materials of the world, how he looks at it and, you know, how his things in his mind, his thoughts, how he looks at it. Then the, what Swamiji is saying that sometimes, you know, we might have an idea that the person who is self-realized and if he has realized, hey, this world is just, you know, a transitory thing, it's not real. <laughs> like they say, no, world is not real. He might just completely ignore it. You know, Kufame Batke, he will just I don't care about this world, just forget it. It's not even, it doesn't even exist. Why do I bother? He's saying, will he do like that? You know, even Arjun was curious in chapter two. He said, hey, you know, a man of self, you know, steady wisdom. Do these people exist? How does he behave? You know, same idea is over here. Hey, he will have all these relationships. And through this Ramayan, we just discussed it. Ramchandra Ji was, you know, that man of steady wisdom, but he did have all those different relationships. You know, so how does he, does he completely ignore or does he engage with them? That's the question. And the, uh, the truth is that they do engage with him. Okay. Such a man of excellent sage Krishna regards all relationships with an equal love and consideration. Uh, be, uh, be they friends or, or foes or indifferent or neutral or hateful or the nearest relations. In this equal vision, all of them are equally important and he embraces in his infinity heart. Infin- them, infinite infinite heart, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Infinite heart, okay. All of them in the same warmth and ardor. His love knows no distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. 
the good and the bad. To him, a sinner is but an ego living in its misunderstandings, since sin is only a mistake of the soul and not a positive uh, bless, bless for me against itself. Rama Tirtha, Tirtha beautifully expresses it when he says that, that we are punished by the sin and not for it. So there are quite a few interesting things in there that how he sees oneness among all the different relationships and you know he treats them equally so I'll, by example we can learn by stories and i don't know if you have heard this story uh, it seems that the story from gandhiji's time okay gandhiji had ashram right so it seems that there was somebody who came to steal something from the ashram in those days god knows what it was unke ashram mein zyada kuch hota nahi tha jo bhi tha so unke jo um चेले थे ना गांधी जी के या उनके जो सहयोगी थे वहाँ पे वो उसको पकड़ के लेके आए गांधी जी के सामने और बोला कि देखो ये चोरी कर रहा था इसको ना कुछ पनिशमेंट दो इसको तो गांधी जी ने बोला कि अच्छा अभी क्या अभी खाने का टाइम हो गया ना तो चलो इसको भी बिठाओ खाने के लिए तो उसने बोला ये क्या कर रहा है इसको थोड़ा इसको तो दो झापड़ लगाना चाहिए ये चोरी कर रहा था उसको बोले खाना खिलाओ तो बोले क्यों चोर को भूख नहीं लगती है क्या यू नो सो then they served him food and the chhod to ek dum pani pani ho gaya bola my god ki ye kaisa kaisa ashram hai aap mere ko dande lagne ki wajah khana mil raha hai you know so wo khana khane ke baad it seems wo unke charnon mein gir gaya aur jab main aaj se kabhi chori nahi karunga you know that's that some vision because he did not look at him as you know is okay jab utne chori ki usko punishment denge lekin wait let's feed him first you know so that was one story i thought which was amazing and the other one i remember was you know we uh, my husband and i we we visited this co- place called manikarna you know in himachal and then you know there it's a very beautiful place they have hot geysers and they have like a gurudwara over there it seems that um guru nanak ji uh, first um, lecture was there something some very big significance is there over there so it seemed that when when guru nanak dev ji came over there he wanted to build a a gurudwara there and it is also very very big shiva place usko mani karn ka naam hi diya hai ki wahan par wo parvati ji ka koi karn phool gir gaya tha and then they got it something like that i don't remember exact story but you know sometimes these how the different sects starts fighting with each other but somebody like guru nanak dev ji doesn't indulge in those things right so these uh, the shiva bhakta you know who are who are the fanatic type i'm talking about not the normal people okay so they were like no you cannot build a gurudwara here or something so these gurudwara wala they were they used to build the wall and these guys used to usko dheh dete the matlab usko gira dete the aisa chalta raha it seems many days <laughs> so in log laga ye kaise log hai hum log gira dete hain log phir bana dete hain phir one time you know they came at like langar time सो सो दे सर अच्छा अच्छा लंगर खाओ आके गुरु नानक देव जी उनको बुलाओ उनको खिलाओ तो उसे अरे हम लोग तो आपके एनिमी है वाई यू फीडिंग आस यू नो सो दे गाट वेरी क्यूरियस दे सर वट काइंड ऑफ पीपल यू आर मेड अप ऑफ यू नो आई मीन वी आर ट्राइंग टू नॉट लेट यू बी हियर एंड यू आर परसिस्टेंट बट यू आर ऑल्सो काइंड सो इस आप अपनी ड्यूटी करते जाओ हम अपनी ड्यूटी करते जाएंगे यू नो सो सो फिर तो वो पानी पानी अच्छा बच्चा बना लो अपना गुरुद्वारा सो इट सीम देर आर बोथ प्लेस देर so those two stories tells you that what they mean by that samabuddhi that is higher people they they look at the world and treat them in the same way they will keep doing their duties but they will not have that animosity in their heart for them that's what it is. and that was one point and the second point was that uh, when swami ji said that sin is only a mistake of the soul and not a positive blasphemy against itself I think that in our Sanatan Dharma, there is no such thing as uh, evil. You know, it is like everybody is divine. They are just confused. That's why they are doing bad stuff. They have forgotten their true nature. The moment they come to their true nature, it will all disappear. All their thing. That's how these saints and sages look at everybody. They don't. You know, we might look at good and bad and that. They just look at it. Oh, it's me. Thora sa gadbad hai bas. You know. एक बार वो फिक्स हो जाएगा तो वो भी डिवाइन हो जाएगा तो कद द न्यू ट्रू नेचर इज डिवाइन दैट्स व्हाट दे आर टेलिंग इन द राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग 
of his own self and the resulting realization of his own self. He becomes the self everywhere. He discovers a unity in the perceived diversity and a subtle rhythm in the obvious discord in the world outside. Having realized himself to the self, which is all pervading to him, for him the entire universe becomes his own self. And therefore, his relationship with every other part of the universe is equal and same. Whether I get wounded in the hand of the leg, hand or the leg, on the back or in the front, on the head or on the shoulder, it is the same to me. Since I am identifying myself equally with my head, my trunk, and my legs as myself. So this is a very powerful uh, also example that even uh, Chinmayananji gives a lot of time that sometimes we don't understand it about the oneness of the world, uh, your cosmos. So how can I see the oneness? I don't understand. So this body example is given. That how in our own body we see oneness. And the, you know, Swamiji is very dramatic in his uh, videos when he's explaining. So it's, he's saying that sometimes it happens to us, no? That because we see oneness and suppose if I'm doing some work and suddenly my finger pokes my eye. As I hota na, kabhi kabhi apna hai finger apne hai aakne chala jata hai. So, so he's saying that when that happens, do you chop off your finger? He's saying, the same finger will massage the eye. The one that has hurt because you have seen oneness. So that's exactly how this person who has a oneness, that even though he sees all different people, but he, he, he realizes that they are, it's all oneness. And even if he has to kisi ko sudharna bhi hoga na, to wo usko prem se sudharenge. Prem se uska enemy banenge. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to say this, but you know, because the words don't explain what they're trying to say. But that's what the, he's talking about over here. So it's something that we have to contemplate upon, you know, how is their vision? Any other question, comment, or anyone wants to add anything? Okay, so we can close Bhagavad Gita here and go to our Atopanishad. Sarvadharman Parityaja Mame Kam Sharanam Raja Aham Twa Sarva Papebya Moksha Ishami Mashuchaha Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om <coughs>